Hello, and welcome back to the Project Finance Modeling for Renewable Energy course. And in this lesson, we will do a brief overview of the uses of funds and the sources of funds for our project during the construction period. It is important that you think of uses and sources of funds as uses and sources of cash. So, what are these uses of funds? The uses of funds are represented by the items that we are going to spend our cash on during the construction period. We are talking about the construction and equipment costs, which we have modeled in the construction and equipment cost sheet in the previous lesson. And there will be the financing costs related to our construction debt. We are going to be paying interest during construction, and we are also going to be paying debt-related fees during the construction. I am going to stress this. We are going to be paying the interest and fees related to the construction debt. That means that we are going to be paying cash for these financing costs during the construction. There is a misunderstanding when you model for project finance transactions that these financing fees are not paid and instead rolled over, meaning that they are added to the outstanding balance of the construction debt. This rarely happens with senior debt facilities in project finance. So, the construction and equipment costs and financing fees will make up the project's capex. And, based on the project's capex and project's leverage, we are going to figure out the schedule of the construction debt drawdown. We already know the total amount of the construction debt. We have determined that in the debt sheet when we size the debt. The construction debt size is in the cell E70, and it is approximately $48 million. That is how much our project can raise in debt financing. If you remember, we base this debt size on the cash flows and the debt service cover ratios in P50 and P99 cases. However, what we do not have is the schedule of the drawdown of the construction debt, which is how much debt we will be drawing in each construction month. Our construction debt drawdown is going to be pro rata, meaning that the debt and equity are drawn according to their share of the whole. And let me repeat one more time. Our construction debt drawdown schedule will be determined by the leverage and the project's capex. So, the question is, how will we determine the leverage for our project? We have created another sheet for today's lesson, which is called a macro sheet, and we will be modeling the leverage on this sheet. The construction debt size will flow in from the debt sheet, and the qualified capex will come from our construction funding sheet. And once we have these two numbers, we will be able to calculate leverage number. This will be the leverage coming out from live calculations. So, why are we calling this sheet macro? Well, we are going to have all the numbers and variables that our future macros will use on this sheet. We will have to create copy paste macros in our model to deal with circular references. So, we want to have everything related to our macros on this single sheet. So, it is easier to analyze the macros that we will be using in this modeling course. We won't be building the macro until we have the financing costs calculation in place. The financing costs will cause circularity in our model, and to handle that circularity, we will be using something called a copy and paste macro. Don't worry if you never heard of such a macro, or what macro is. We will go through the macros and VBA coding in detail later on in the course. So, our leverage calculation is going to be done on the macro sheet, and then it will flow to the construction funding sheet, to the cell E9. And then, based on the value of the cell E9, we are going to calculate the debt drawdown schedule. In addition to the construction debt drawdown, we have to model the construction debt balances. This is needed to model the interest during construction on the construction debt. And we also have to keep track of the construction debt balances, so we know the debt amount we have to refinance at the end of the construction period. So, once we have modeled the construction debt drawdown, and based on our qualified capex, we will model the amount of capex that will have to be covered by the shareholder loan and equity investment. And, as we mentioned in the previous lesson, the equity funding will come in two forms. Shareholder loan, which is a loan from shareholders to the project company, and equity investment. In project finance transactions, usage of shareholder loans by project sponsors is common, and the reason why investors invest in the form of a loan is that the interest on the shareholder loan is tax-deductible, 
and therefore reduces the taxable income and taxes paid. Of course, whether the shareholder loan's interest will be tax deductible or not will depend on the tax authorities and their interpretation of the loan. Another reason to use shareholder loans is to resolve the problem of the trapped cash in situations where dividend payout is restricted by the earnings. We saw in the lesson on equity, when your dividends are restricted by the earnings, we accumulate a significant amount of cash on the balance sheet. And shareholder loan partially resolves this problem, since the shareholder loan principal and interest is not restricted by the earnings. Another thing to mention about the shareholder loan is that there will be two types of balances. First, we are going to calculate a cash balance, which will depend on the shareholder loan drawdown, which is always in cash. And we have to keep track of the shareholder loan cash balances for the purpose of building the sources and uses of funds. And there will be another balance, which will go into the balance sheet of our project company. And that balance will depend on the shareholder loan cash drawdown and the accrued interest during construction on the shareholder loan. We specifically say accrued because this is a non-cash expense. The lenders will not allow the shareholder loan's interest or principal to be paid to shareholders during the project's construction period. In fact, there will be no payouts to the shareholders during the construction period. Therefore, what typically happens, if the accrual of interest on shareholder loan is allowed by lenders, is that the interest during construction will be added to the shareholder loan's outstanding balance and the shareholder loan outstanding balance and interest will be repaid starting from the first operations period subject to the cash availability, meaning that there is sufficient cash after paying the debt service and funding the reserve accounts. So, this non-cash interest expense, which will be rolled over, will create a non-cash balance, and this non-cash balance will be used for the accounting purpose and for the purpose of paying interest and principal during the project's operations. Once we have determined the shareholder loan cash drawdown, we can then work out the equity investment, which will be recorded as paid in capital on the balance sheet. So, this has been an overview of what we are trying to accomplish when we will model the sources and uses of funds in the next two lessons.